Today we're going to answer a question from Mr. Serrano, and that question is, let's read it. Mr. Serrano said, what would you recommend for an X570 board to add two M.2 drives? We've, we've had some other dialogue. This is in response to the video on the ASUS Hyper M.2, which is a four drive card, version two, PCI Express 3.0, comparison tutorial install. Okay, this video is going to be about dual M.2 NVMe PCI Express adapters. There's going to be bifurcated and non-bifurcated. The requirements are going to be either a 16 lane slot or an 8 lane slot electrically. When you have a card that is bifurcated, it's going to be more expensive. When you have a card that requires motherboard bifurcation, it's going to be less expensive. And we've also got some cards that are already populated with memory. So I'm going to take you through a list of 10 different drives and when this video is over with, we're then going to go and take one of the cards that we're going to look at, which is probably going to be the Super Micro, I'll tell you right now, which is, um, since this is server technology, going to require a motherboard that has bifurcation capability. So even though we're talking about X570 and we're looking at dual M.2 NVMe PCI Express adapters, we're going to use the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare because we have PCI Express 4.0, we have two 16 lane slots and two 8 lane slots. We're going to use one of those 8 lane slots to test that card. On to the list. And all these links are going to be up on Amazon. All right. Number one, we're looking at a StarTech. So number one, we know this is a dual M.2 card. Number two, this says this can work in a by 8 or by 16. And looking at the pins on the card, and since it's dual drives, we need eight lanes electrically. Now, why do I say that? Okay, remember, each M.2 NVMe drive requires four lanes. Doesn't matter whether it's PCI Express 3 or PCI Express 4. Four lanes for each drive. So that's a total of eight lanes. So one eight lane slot, we're in business. On the X570 chipset, that's kind of a big deal. We are limited on resources. I won't get a lot into it other than I don't mind looking. And uh, by the way, this is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. I want to thank you guys for joining us. When somebody asks about one of these cards, I don't mind looking it up because when I'm helping you guys, it helps me because uh, we learn together. I know what I'm looking for so I can extrapolate. So when someone says I have an X570 chipset, my first response is the motherboard because I look at the brand, the model, and revision. And historically, bifurcation is a feature that is probably enabled the most of the most motherboards, number one by ASUS. Beyond that, then it gets very specific on the chipset. And for example, if someone says, well, I've got a, a gigabyte motherboard and uh, I have to look it up. But generically, bifurcation is a feature on the X299, X399, PCI Express 3, and as we go forward on PCI Express 4, the high end desktop would be the TRX40 and on the workstation, the WRX80. So we're going to look at those cards, dual slot cards, and we're going to use this Gigabyte TRX40 designator that we've been testing with because we have a quad card in a 16 lane slot and we're going to put a dual card in one of these 8 lane slots. Back to the list. So StarTech, it'll do RAID and JBOD. Size of the drives, because this question has come up before, and not all the cards will work with the same size drives. Uh, that question came up once about uh, a 22110 and one of these adapters will work with that. I think only one person has asked me and I was kind of surprised that I hadn't been watching that. This one will do 2242, 2260, and 2280. Okay, it's made by StarTech. So based on the price, it's a bifurcated card. Works in an eight lane slot. And the chipset, which is really a big deal. Let's see if they tell us. And I'll guarantee you that chipset is underneath that heat sink. We'd probably have to pull that off and take a look. This is probably an AS Media chipset without doing some digging. But what's important to know is this is first on the list. Number one, it'll work with two M.2 NVMe PCI Express drives. Requires an eight lane slot. And it, um, based on price, is self bifurcated. Number two, now this is an Ablecon card. Number one, it's a dual M.2 drive card. Supports non bifurcated motherboards. Okay, this has bifurcation built on. Look at the price, $172. It has a chip. Again, probably AS Media when it says right there. The AS Media ASM2824 switch. So that does the switching where you have two drives uh, for the uplink and the downlink. So it spreads that out because if you've got a motherboard that doesn't support bifurcation, that has to be bifurcated. Otherwise, 
on a on the motherboard without bifurcation, it would only see one drive the first drive. This way, it sees both drives because it does that splitting, that, that bifurcation, four lanes and four lanes. So the up and the down. A lot going on. Moving on. Number three, another dual M.2. And this is by uh, Retop. And if I pronounce that incorrectly, forgive me. Now this one supports, as I had mentioned earlier, about a 22110. It also goes down to a 2230. That's getting pretty tiny. Requires an eight lane slot. Based on the price and what this will do, I'm, I'm really surprised this has got to be a, uh, let's get into some details before I say what's what. Okay, uses the AS Media 2812 chipset. Does not depend on PCI Express bifurcation support by the motherboard. Okay, that is a bifurcated card. How well does it work? I have no idea. I just know about it. Okay, Cyba, this brand is sometimes referred to, I believe, as uh, IO Crest. As far as I know, they're one and the same. Now, this is an interesting card, a little bit higher quality card. The reason I say that is because it has a heat sink on it. And if you'll notice that aluminum cover. I don't like the little fan, but it is what it is. Okay, supports non-bifurcated motherboards. PCI Express 3.0. It says by 16, but that's uh, dual drive, so it's an eight-lane slot. What we can look at is the AS Media chipset. Most all of these cards use an AS Media chipset. Which one? Depends. Most of them will tell us, not all of them. And right there it tells us dedicated PCI Express 3.0 by 8. And it will intelligently aggregate dual by 4 PCI Express 3.0 bus bandwidth. Moving to the next card. Number 5. Now this is a card you might not think of in these terms, but this requires an 8-lane slot, and this is the WD Black 1 terabyte AN1500. Number one, it supports two M.2 NVMe drives. Uh, we don't know the chipset because it's got a, if you'll notice, that is a sealed cover. So not only is that a heat sink, but that uh, doesn't identify what the chipset is. Based on the price of the card, it's probably AS Media. We could investigate and find out. But suffice to say, the only way to buy this card is with memory. It's already populated. You can't buy it without memory because you've got to remember, Western Digital is in the business of selling storage. And since they uh, have acquired copious amounts of that, this is a big deal with them. So they don't want to sell the card. They want to sell the drives. So they sell the drives on the card as a package. Good to know. But this classifies as a dual M.2 drive. Next on the list, Cable CC, a dual M.2 NVMe. And what's curious about this, this says this will support both. Both SSDs, that's what AHCI implies, as well as a uh, M.2 NVMe PCI Express 3.0 drive. So it says uh, by 8 by 16 RAID card VROT, VROT, virtual RAID on chip. That refers to Intel. We won't get into that. We'll say that for another time. RAID 0. So on a machine that will support an 8-lane slot electrically, that card will work. And it'll support the 2230, 2243, 2260, and 2280. So you got uh, four formats of drives. It, uh, for $55, that's going to require a motherboard that supports bifurcation. It says here the product does not support hardware RAID, only supports the formation of soft RAID under Windows 10, or the use of other third-party software to build RAID. My expectation would be for this card, Yes, it supports the operating system RAID, but this should support a hybrid BIOS RAID. It's not a hardware RAID card. None of these are. Supports motherboards with detachable PCI Express lanes, which would be bifurcation. Moving on to the next card. Not sure the pronunciation. Ziwa, a dual M.2 NVMe, and this says AHCI to PCI Express. So that implies it would work with either one, but my expectation, we're talking specifically about M.2 NVMe, PCI Express drives. Okay, this again is PCI Express 3.0, Generation 3. Uh, again, the same information about a by 8 Shows a price of 5888 so that means that is going to have to have a motherboard that supports bifurcation. What we'll do when we list these in the description, I will point out and I will put like in parentheses, uh, bifurcated or uh, self-bifurcated. Or excuse me, I'll say... Uh, Motherboard bifurcation or self-bifurcated. So that way you can differentiate when you're looking at the description as you go down the list. Because depending on your resources, that'll depend on which one of these cards you want. Uh, and the one we're going to show is going to be the Super Micro because this came from a server technology. Hope that description and uh, explanation helps. Moving on down the list. 
And this is the card we're probably going to look at from Supermicro. It was one of the first to be available. And what was curious, I say curious, it was kind of odd at the time. We're talking, we're going back, you know, about three years ago. And we can look at the ASIN number and figure out the date. I'll get into that when the video comes up. But what I want to mention here is this is a server technology that's been around for a while. But it never did really make sense to me because if you've got a computer that has a 16 lane slot, you want to maximize those resources. So you want to use all 16 lanes. Otherwise, you waste half of them. However, we're at a point now with the kind of stuff we're doing that if you've only got an eight lane slot, this kind of card makes a lot of sense. Where before, maybe it didn't. And at, based on the price for two drives, that's going to require a motherboard that supports bifurcation. Okay, now that we've looked at eight cards that each do two drives, now we're going to look at two cards that each do one drive. And this first one is AmpCon. This supports only one drive. However, it's PCI Express 4.0. So dealing with issues of PCI Express 3.0 versus PCI Express 4.0, you know, to reiterate the numbers, and I'll put them up in the description of the video, but with PCI Express 3, we're looking at a drive that's good up to 3,500 megabytes. However, when we go to PCI Express 4.0, we can get a second generation drive that goes up to 7,000 megabytes per drive. When we go to PCI Express 5, the relevance, we're looking at 15,000 megabytes per drive. So if you've got a machine and you want to add one drive, this is a card for PCI Express 4 that will get you the maximum speed, the maximum bandwidth. For the dual cards as well as the quad cards, uh, the specificity for PCI Express 3 versus PCI Express 4, we have to look at the details. And when you guys ask, I don't mind looking it up and we'll verify that information because I want to make sure that whatever we're doing is going to work for you so you have a successful build. Back to the specs. So to reiterate, if you're looking for a single drive card and don't mind using a slot, that will work. That requires four lanes. If you notice, it says buy four adapter. And for uh, $12, you can put an M.2 in your machine. And to reiterate, even if you do that, your motherboard has to support M.2 NVMe. If you want to boot from it, that's a requirement that's got to be in your BIOS. So if you don't have that in your BIOS, you'd be able to use the drive if you're on the operating system that supports it. But if you don't have the BIOS for it, you can't boot from it. So I want to put that out there. Some of those little things we need to qualify. So let's take a look at the last one in the batch. And this is from Glow Trends. And the reason I want to include Glow Trends for those of you who don't remember, please take a look. We've got a video up on Glow Trends for a four drive card that works in an eight lane slot and it is self bifurcated. We did a video on that. It's PCI Express 3. Right now, the issues with PCI Express 3.0 cards versus, versus PCI Express 4, there's kind of a hole in the market and it's kind of hard to say if we're going to see any new cards out, whether they're quad cards or dual cards, based on the time frame we're looking at for PCI Express 5 coming out based on the chip shortage. It's kind of a mixed bag right now. I would expect it'll probably take a couple of years. Well, by the time the vendors have a couple of years to get around to getting the parts to make the cards, I don't expect them to make anything else PCI Express 3. It has to be something in the loop. If we look at this the way a motherboard's designed, one of the things that we had been taught and we were told a long time ago that a motherboard takes about nine months to develop, it has a 12 month shelf life. Okay, if we go through this cycle, we can't get chips vendors miss that cycle, I think they'll go to the next cycle, which means at the very least, they're going to be PCI Express 4.0. Those are going to be backwards compatible. So if you're looking for something, look for something PCI Express 4. But if you can wait, you're looking at least a year down the road. I just want to point that out. And to bring this back around, since we did a video about a Glow Trends, which was the Glow Trends Sky, they actually have two, but the Glow Trends Sky card is PCI Express 3.0, requires an eight lane slot, it's self bifurcated and it'll do four drives. Nice little card, PCI Express 3. So, this is a Glow Trends adapter for an M.2 PCI Express 4.0 for one drive. So, one drive, that means we need a four lane slot. So, I'll give you some kind of a heads up on what you can do. And depending on your motherboard layout, we, we want to preface that because a lot of times your, uh, your 16 lane and 8 lane slots, those are slots that are going to the CPU. When you get down to the four lane slots, a lot of times those may be a shared resource and that resource may be going through the chipset. So your performance, you have to look at, are we on the CPU or are we on the chipset? If we're on the chipset, uh, you may or may not have PCI Express 4. We have to, we have to look at all that and, and figure out where your performance issues are. So I like to maximize resources. If I use something that requires four lanes, 
I want full speed. But if I have to put it in an eight lane slot, I'd rather use a card that does two drives. However, if I use a card that does two drives, it may be PCI Express 3. So it's, it's a mixed bag. There are trade-offs. But I want to share this list based on the question because we're about answering subscriber questions. I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. We're out.